Ecuador faces considerable challenges in providing quality health care to its entire population. It has too few doctors and nurses, and 30% of Ecuadorians lack any health insurance coverage. Disparities exist between urban and rural areas, but government reforms have been implemented to improve health care for all. Prosthetic specialist Robert Openshaw exemplifies the power of generosity and resourcefulness in helping those in need. In his practice, Robert often receives donations of prosthetics, which he then uses for his missions. However, the prosthetics he receives are not custom made for the patients he serves, and he must manipulate used sockets by patting them or cutting them down. There's so many. I know. It's I think we've fit, what, 200 Over prostheses? 400. Over 400? Yeah, see where the brain is? We uh, fit a little boy, was he 14 years old? Yes. With an above knee prosthesis that he had fallen out of his dad's truck when he was backing up and he ran him over. And he ended up losing his leg. So. Jeff and I talked to him and we got him fit and we had to run all over town finding parts and pieces to, to get a prosthesis together for him. And I think, yeah, that one, that one still touches me. So, and that's the reason why we keep coming back for the, for the, for the stories that we uh, end up having and the memories and just, just, it's just a good feeling to us. One case in particular stands out in Robert's team mission work, an above-knee amputation. Unlike below-knee amputees that require silicone socks for padding and suction, above-knee amputees can typically insert their remaining leg directly into a socket. However, learning to use a prosthetic knee joint with a long foreign leg extension can be very difficult for above-knee amputees. Without proper support, they can easily fall, which is where the expertise of Gloria Soto Reyes comes into play. The use of alcohol wipes is also essential in the fitting process, as they clean and dry quickly while providing a tight seal between the skin and the socket. This helps to prevent irritation and discomfort, ensuring the patients can wear their prosthetic for extended periods without issue. The knee joint mechanism can be especially challenging to get accustomed to, as it requires being locked with every step to allow the other leg to step through. Gloria, who has done volunteer work with Robert since 2012, is a Master's of Science in Physical Therapy. She provides bars and physical support until their patients can safely manage their blocked knee. Gloria provides all the attention their patients need to help them master the intricate movements necessary to use their prosthetics. Robert's tireless dedication to patients, along with his knack for reutilizing donated prosthetics, has changed many lives. The work of Robert and Gloria demonstrates how community and compassion can come together in creating a better world. The sun rises over the bustling city of Quito, Ecuador, 
as the Surgery Warriors medical team prepares for another day of saving lives. Among them is Dr. Christopher Tyner, a skilled surgeon with a reputation for his creative reconstruction techniques. Hi, my name is Christopher Tyner. Um, I've been with IMA for about 15 years and we've traveled all over Latin America helping um, many uh, people in many countries and working with doctors uh, internationally and it's always been a pleasure for me. This year uh, we've uh, been welcomed to Quito in Ecuador and uh, our mission here is to work with the local doctors so that we can have joint learning and service as many people as we can. A new day brings an opportunity to collaborate with Ecuadorian medical colleagues. The U.S. team soon realizes they will have far fewer resources than they are used to. Despite this, they can assist with their expertise and experience and donate some critical supplies. As the day progresses, the teams work side by side, sharing ideas and techniques. The trauma floor is inspired with their camaraderie to save lives. As the team gathers around the patient, Dr. Tyner assesses the damage and begins to plan his approach. He shares his innovative techniques with the resident doctors, who are eager to learn from his expertise. Today, he is faced with a unique challenge, a patient whose ear was bitten off by a stray dog. But what strikes him the most is the hospital's use of reusable drapes and sheets, a stark contrast to the disposable items he is used to in the United States. Dr. Tyner reflects on how the convenience of disposable items has led to a culture of waste. In Quito, the team is resourceful and efficient, making the most of what they have. It's a reminder that sometimes the simplest solutions can be the most effective. As the surgery progresses, Dr. Tyner works meticulously to reconstruct the patient's ear. The team is focused and determined, and their hard work pays off. By the end of the procedure, the patient's ear is effectively restored. As the patient recovers, Dr. Tyner and the resident doctors discuss the experience. They agree that the hospital's resourcefulness is something to be admired, and perhaps they could learn a thing or two from their colleagues in Quito. As the doctors review Marina CT scan, the plates holding her deformed face together are seen. Her nose and one eye were lost in an accident and the plates are a lasting reminder of the severe trauma she has suffered. The question on everyone's mind is, what can Dr. Tyner do for her? Is it even possible to do anything? Does he have the proper tools to do it? Now we're going upstairs, right? 
We're gonna yeah take the films. Ahorita espere, señora. We're gonna take the films over to their plastic surgeon and Dr. Tyner, and hopefully they could get a better look at what's going on and see how they can help her out. Poco nervios, nervios. She said happy and nervous. The next crucial step in Marina's journey is to try to get her approved for surgery by Dr. Tyner. The most difficult decision is in the hands of the team's chief. This is a pivotal moment for Marina. Support from surgery warriors could mean the difference between continued struggles with her injuries or a full recovery. Uncertainty hangs in the air as the doctors continue to debate Marina's fate. With only three days left in Quito, the tension grows. Will they be able to schedule the operation that Marina so desperately needs in time? Do you want to do surgery here? Sure. Sure. What? I'm going to open. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Sí, por favor. You tell me, yeah. it's your hospital, if it's okay. Okay. Uh, I need a program. Necesito program. Okay, but check, yeah. check, check, program. check the program. Check the program. Yeah, um, sure. For employees. Um, okay. The program. Todo bien. Just let me know which day. But it's not just the ticking clock. The question on everyone's mind is whether it's even possible to restore Marina's face near to how it was. Will she ever be able to look in the mirror again without feeling ashamed or embarrassed? And what about her young son? Will he be finally able to see his mother's true face free from the awful scars? And I'll go there Trust my word I'll take the death From stone to stone From heart to heart I'll give my life Even if I die with my